rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. And we're not teaching that anymore. We're, we're not teaching about going to hell anymore. No, we don't. We, we really don't. And I'm not saying that that, that was a, a, it was a, a good way of, 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 <laughs> of, you know, scaring people into, <laughs> into the good start <laughs> into the family. But that stuck with me as a, as a child <laughs> until I actually gave my life to Christ. Now, I, I you know, grew up in the church. I had to go even though I didn't want to go and stuff like that. But, you know, that just that just confirms, you know, God's word when he says train up a child in the way he should go. Okay. Um, but that, <laughs> that fire and brimstone, uh -huh. that did something for me. Did you, did you know, did, did, it's interesting when we think of the image of fire and brimstone, it relates more, to, I'm asking, you see what I think about it, does it, it relates or communicate more to your flesh than, than, than anything else? Does it? Does yeah, it, well, you know, it was, I think it was my being. Yeah. Because I did not want to endure that for eternity because I knew that it was eternity in that position. Right, right. You know, being separated from God was was an eternity in hell. Yeah. And what hell was. Right. You know, being taught, you know, when you hear the descriptions of hell as a child and they make it vivid in your mind. Okay. That sticks with you. <laughs> it does, it does. In other words, it's something that your flesh can communicate with, though, right? Yeah. yeah. It should. Yeah. I think when, if you talk to a person that's not converted, what else do they communicate through? Right. Because they that's can't the... communicate through spiritual things because their spirit is still dead. Yeah. yeah. So you have to appeal like that. Can I, can I ask this question? Is, is, is hell punishment for flesh? Because you're you're given a glorified body to be tormented throughout all eternity. It's for both. It's for I think, both. I think I think hell can relate to. I mean, flesh can relate to the concept of fire and brimstone, right? It, 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 when when that image comes to the mind, the flesh can react to it, right? Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, because it, it, it sees it, right? It visualizes. Yeah. It's experienced it, right? But, but it's funny, if you think about it, and from a spiritual perspective, when we talk about Lazarus and the rich man, Joe, that man was in flame, tormented by these flames, but he wasn't reacting the way the flesh would have been in those flames. But the flesh can relate to it, right? What I'm just saying is, is a different concept to the soul if it goes to hell. What we think in terms of what Jesus said, he said, don't fear him who can destroy the body only, and after that can do nothing. Right. Don't fear him who can destroy both body and soul in hell. Yeah. So yeah. there is a, there, uh, I, did I cut you off? I, I didn't mean to cut you off. Well, okay. well, just, I, I just want to add to the fact that, that that was really a question to me, to us though, is it the flesh can relate to it. It communicates to the flesh, right? Pain. Yes. It's communicated yes. for the flesh to relate to, but it's, it's definitely not the same type of flames, all right? I mean, it, it, we, we, it, it, it is something that they can, they can do. It's almost like a child playing with a socket on the wall, I think. Uh -huh. The child oh, can't really, the child can't identify with electricity. Yeah. You know, electricity car right. didn't destroy you, but, but I tell you what, it only took that one time. <laughs> or, or you tap on the back of the hand with, a, with something. And that, that just a little shy of killing them, or, or that that one time, but yeah. it, it's almost like I don't think that what we can conceive of as hell uh -huh. is really the true manifestation. I think it's like getting smacked on the back of the hand with a with a paint stirrer, right? Or sticking right. your finger in the socket. <laughs> you know what right. I'm saying? 
Get him a gas stand up. Get over here. One will deter you from experiencing the other. And I think that's one of the reasons why sin is so important. And I'm not saying what pain is so important in this life is that it deters you from sin. Because if you experience pain in the flesh, it's most unpleasant. Who wants to, you know, multiply that by any, any, I mean, any factor? Nobody really wants to go through suffering for eternity. But, but you know, but you well, know. Can I, I, and I, and I didn't, I didn't bring this up to, to segue into another topic. This, I only brought this up because we're talking about to do the will of God. Yeah. Is to suffer. Uh huh. It, it, it just. It, it, it goes hand in hand. Right. And we, we talked about that <clears throat> briefly, that this isn't being taught. Okay. You know, we're being taught to go after things of the flesh. Right. But things of the spirit require suffering. We, we just went over that. Okay. And so, which made me think that, okay, now, I longed after things of the spirit, not because the suffering therein, right? But the suffering if I did it. Okay. So there is a temporary suffering in this body, living for God, but there is an eternal mm -hmm. suffering outside of God. You know when when you when you deny Christ, right. so and 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 to make that awareness is is I think there's there's a key to that. Okay. You know because this 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 isn't all uh, uh, cake and ice, right? So to say. But you know <laughs> this 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 lifestyle. But the question I guess sometimes you know this uh, lifestyle isn't a piece. Huh? What but the question is what what define I guess the you know like when you're talking about hell we can see the understanding of suffering, right? We can see the torment. Yes. But what about in this world, what are we talking about in suffering in this world? That let's say for the flesh concern is is it bothers them. What does the flesh care about suffering in this world? I, I, I think that, you know, inherently there's going to be some suffering. We're going to live out the Christ because the flesh is fallen. It's corrupted. And anything that you do that aligns itself with the Lord is going to be a, a uh, what's that? Uh, it's going to be a discomfort to the flesh. Uh-huh. And because uh -huh. it, because of its fallen state. I don't think that it initially was that way, but I think because of the fallen state of mankind, the things that God requires of us as far as righteousness and holiness and stuff is concerned is just at odds with us. Plus, I mean, fornication and adultery is just a part of our basic nature. I mean, that's what we, our basic fallen nature, you know? Fallen nature. We lust and just inherently so. So when you stop me from fornicating and from, you know, adulterous behaviors and from overeating and, you know, prideful behaviors and if you tell me I, that, that I got to sacrifice myself for somebody else, that's painful. <laughs> That's okay. painful to me. It's like, hey, man, how come I got to give up everything today? I won't keep my own stuff. I'll sacrifice everybody else. <laughs> but, and that's the cardinality of it. When you tell me I got to sacrifice myself, yeah, somebody else might live, that's just painful to me. Hey, Eric. Yeah, so, <laughs> so it's, a different, it's a different type of suffering, right? It's a different kind of suffering, man. Right? I mean, it's just different forms of suffering. You have to understand. You have to tell the ball that thing down to it. You know, the opposite of suffering and pain is pleasure. Okay. Uh oh, uh, one side of the coin you got pain. Yeah. And one side of the coin you got pleasure. And one is attractive and one is shunned. And this okay, okay, okay. But you have to ask yourself now. When you look at yourself and all of humanity, when you say the word 
pleasure. Everybody's ears. <laughs> okay. Including okay. Christians. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't found on this planet nobody uh -huh. <laughs> who don't deserve praise. And then I find in this world very few people okay. who embrace pain. Uh -huh. Now, when I boil that down to the basics, I say uh, the same entity in me that hates pain loves pleasure. Loves pleasure, yeah. Yes, yeah. And we will go to very drastic means to to, to secure pleasure. Mm. As a matter of fact, that's why we want money. Okay. We well, take money. Yeah. Well, you can buy pleasure. Yeah, you can buy it, right? You can buy it. You my pleasure. Right. So fallenness is, see, I think sometimes when we use the word fallenness, we don't really understand what we're, what we're really getting at when we say fallenness. Hmm. That's why I say that what fallenness really produced was a selfish being. Yeah. Because all selfish creatures love pleasure okay. and they hate pleasure. <clears throat> If you're a selfish guy, you know, I, I, I used to say you take five pieces of candy, put them on the table, you put two babies in there, two little toddlers in there, one of them toddlers gonna try to get all that candy. Take it better early. All the candy over there to his side. <laughs> and so the, the nature of fallenness is that it produces a self-centered, self-seeking, self-addicted, self-absorbed being. And that being cannot function in its rightful place as a servant to God because it exalted itself out of the place of servitude. Yeah. Huh. That was that was Satan. And he manifested that when he said, I will exalt.